start this. I just two two notes before we begin. Begin one. I'd like to just um, while we have this moment, just please. Um, we should all thank our musicians, Spencer Yee and the other musicians that are presented. And I'm sure we know this too, but it's it's John Lennon's 70th birthday today as well. So time sensitive. It's time sensitive. Okay. So Claire, do you want to kick this off? <laughs> Kicking. Um, those are such great presentations that um, I couldn't think of any questions. No. Um, the. Um, <laughs> I was struck by this um, phrase in our last extravaganza, the new us. And, um, and so I wanted to sort of return it to my question about um, what is uh, your answer to the, the uh, critique that we are part of a bourgeois social movement and to what degree are, it's what we're doing. Um, I mean, you know, I think about like where I'm from in the South, people had um, what they call benefits, like where they um, would just fry up a bunch of chicken and invite a lot of people over and charge them money so that they could pay their rent. I mean, and this is what, um, you know, Paul, Polanyi calls one part of the economy that's always functioning, whether it's recorded or not, which is reciprocity and in the same uh, breath redistribution. Um, so anyway, I thought maybe um, you all could speak to that question. Was there a question? Um, okay, I guess I'll start. Um, I don't know how to answer that really, but I think that um, the way that we started this project was that we were thinking about the community that we knew and how to serve them, and then started thinking about how there are all these other models out there that you know, we could stand to learn from and have a little humility about our own scale and what it was that we felt that we could implement. And I think that um, all these other projects really speak to um, situations and contexts that we don't know anything about. And again, it's like this is all a learning tool so that we don't, um, we don't just parachute into places that we don't know anything about and say this is how you solve um, the fact that nobody has any money for creative projects, but instead um, figure out a kind of model to, um, to have a conversation with people that have radically different circumstances than we do. And I, I think also that, I mean, all of us would say that, um, that the soup projects are small and, and you know, they, there's a lot that we have questions about as we scale up. So I know that's kind of a cop out, but I mean, just sort of something that we think about. Um, I guess I think of who controls the food system as the bourgeois. And I would um, think that if, if our practice is called bourgeois, that it's, it's reflecting um, kind of the negative side of the logic of the industrial food system that's dominated by the bourgeois. Um, and hopefully that is reflecting ideas of a multicultural proce process of food production rather than a monocultural food production process, um, that it's bringing ideas of um, of social cohesion rather than dissociation um, that are, um, there's so many positive sides to that, but I, I guess I don't feel like I need to defend it anymore. <laughs> um, I don't know if we need to go in line the whole time, but <laughs> I'll follow suit. Um, I think, I mean, just the, the new us was a, a, a nod to a, a Harvey Milk charge, actually, about um, uh, and it was really poignant with all the LGBT suicides that have been happening because it's about, it's in response to him getting a phone call um, from a, a young person who was thinking about killing themselves. And, um, but it's about, his whole, his whole idea was that uh, gay people feel, you know, at that time, you know, still, feel like they're an us. And uh, the African American population in San Francisco felt like they were an us, and the Asian immigrant population felt like they were an us. And, and his charge was, was that all of the us's needed to get together, and that's actually what happened and how uh, he came to office. Um, but I think, you know, that, that a dinner, a, a food system 
uh, lends itself to people creating that us and having that conversation and having, you know, a, it sounds so basic, but people are able to connect over a meal in a way that they're not able to connect at a conference here, you know, or in a school setting necessarily, or in a, um, a political arena in a, in a, in a public way. Um, so I think that's sort of the new us that I'm interested in thinking about, which maybe ends up being bourgeois, but you know, you, you're only, you can only destabilize your power. You know, that's all I have power to do, so. What was the question? Okay, I'll, now, 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 now I'll put it in the form of a question. Um, <laughs> can you define the new us that your work is speaking to? Or does that make any sense to you? Uh, yes. Uh, I think I think I mentioned that briefly before. Um, it's it, it has nothing to do with bourgeois or, or anything else. It has to do with the artist uh, not limiting himself or herself uh, to her freedom, to her art, but to serve a little bit to to put that art into service for humanity, because humanity is in trouble. And if we continue painting diligently in a corner, beautiful yellows next to a green, it's not going to answer that problem. I'm not against painting, I'm just saying that it's got to be some kind of a movement into the world, opening our eyes and, and, and feelings and talent to do something that will help people, make them feel better about themselves. Great answers. Um, <laughs> Agnes, um, I'm so um, thrilled to have you here <laughs> that I want to um, direct a question at you. You know, the. Um, I was, wa I was thinking while I was watching your slideshow that the wheat field has got to be one of the most photogenic projects um, in, in the 20th century. And um, I was just wondering if, um, how you all think about the role of aesthetics in, um, you know, what, a lot of what you're doing is very much like what Jack Burnham was talking about as a sort of systems aesthetics. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm always curious about well, how are we redefining aesthetics? Um, I think aesthetic serves its time. It's, it's a reaction to its time, so it evolves constantly. I, I don't know what else to say about that. It's just, it keeps changing according to the needs of people. We see, we do, we react, we make art and we better make art rather than war. So it's, it's just, it's, it's self-evolutionary process. And about being photogenic, um, I, I did most of the photography, lying in the mud, shooting upward, trying to get uh, the wheat field into focus at the same time, the Statue of Liberty across the Hudson and going out and, and shooting at five in the morning. Um, it was probably the most difficult thing I've ever done. And I had no money. I got $10,000 altogether for the project. And I would have needed probably a quarter of a million to do it right. And so I had volunteers. God bless volunteers. <laughs> uh, and I felt that since I couldn't pay them, I would feed them. So after a day's work, nine o'clock in the evening, I would go out and make sandwiches for the next day so that I could feed the volunteers. Um, these projects cannot be done without people's help because they never fund it properly. Now I'm digressing, sorry. Say something. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> hypnotized. Um, I, I, I mean, for us, it's a much more superficial and it's not a sage, but, uh, you know, we 
definitely have a goal to raise as much money as possible. So we, aesthetically, I mean, it's like we put on the best and most beautiful event we can. Um, there's, there's not really any, uh, you know, artistic practice behind it except, like, you know, tricking, not, well, you know, having people think they're having fun. So, like, because like, they are. So, like, we, you know, we do a church basement party and, uh, like, your chicken dinner party in the South. So, um, that's, I mean, that's our role. And it's, it's like this every time. So, um, that's, that's the role for us. The thing that's been interesting to us as we've watched other people start their own programs in other places, well, maybe I'll just speak for myself, but to see how other people are, like, either one, much better at cooking than we ever were, or, like, two, much better at sort of creating a nice meal situation for these sort of things to happen in. And I was thinking when we were backstage before when you guys were, like, busting out the costumes and we were seeing them for the first time, like, oof. Abby and I had to make those. They would look really bad if we had been in the back, like, cutting cardboard and painting things. Um, and so I think that's why we wanted to emphasize in our talk that we don't think of um, our practice or Sunday Soup as, uh, like, an art practice or as an artist project. The idea is that we're, uh, you know, young arts administrators interested in trying to experiment with the, situ with the system and do something differently. And we hope that in the, in the terms of the systems aesthetics thing, that even something that's happening on a small scale in the weird storefront in Chicago, if it's posed as arts administration, that it can be, it can operate in that same ecology that arts administration operates on in big nonprofits, in for-profit galleries, in the US and in countries all over the world too. So I, I, that systems idea is, it feels really relevant to the way we thought about it. You want to take some questions? Okay. Pretty fast. Fast on the draw. Yeah, thanks. Um, I would just, it seems to me, and maybe I'm missing something, that, that the use of food here is, is a, a contingency. It could be anything. It doesn't have to be food. It could be any service at all that sort of, in this case, creates a group experience. And, and I'm wondering if it's just sort of smoke and mirrors to distract from the fact that it's actually a very sort of shy stab at socialism, what you're trying to do. And why not just ask people to donate um, to the arts and call it public funding and then all of the energy that goes into making all of the, you know, all the energy goes then into making the art instead of running a restaurant. Um, because they won't give money. I mean, <laughs> I, I, like the, to me, that's like a really hard argument. You say, oh, just give, you know, everybody, give, everybody here, give me 10 bucks right now. I, I don't know if that would really result in um, and actually getting any money or facilitating any kind of conversation that is built upon, you know, social relationships, having an experience together. You're right in that food is not, um, that food serves as a tool to have this conversation, but I don't think it could be anything. I don't, I don't think it's as simple as that. Um, I think there's other ways that other people have figured out communal situations. The way that we know within our own modest circumstances that we're starting out in is um, we could cook and we could invite friends over and, and this, this provides a forum um, where people are comfortable, you know, we were sharing something and asking them to share something back. So. Yeah, and I think uh, the way I think about it is this, this quote, I think it was from the whole Earth Catalog that you read earlier, this, it said, um, a simpler, realer, one-to-one -one relationship to the work itself. And I think that's what makes people feel uh, comfortable giving up their money when they come to Sunday Soup or something like that. They feel like they have an actual stake, both in terms of the money that they're giving, but in their vote and seeing the person's project a march along, especially if it's a project that only funds things in a specific city or community, you have um, an investment in it that you don't have if you're sort of plunking it into the big pool like everyone does by paying taxes and funding the money that gets given out through the NEA. There's a different relationship to the work that gets funded, I feel like. Yeah. And I also feel like it's good to make an argument like, as to why people um, should be funding art instead of just saying, hey, give me $10 because art deserves it, but creating a situation and a number of steps in which people are advocating for the things that they think are important, or creative projects in general. I mean, with us, it's not necessarily about funding artists per se, but you know, thinking about how we make arguments for what we think is important locally, and that this provides an a venue to do it. Okay, I want to just run back here. There you go. That's what I pictured, NATO running around with the audience. 
<laughs> Hi. Um, so community gardens and local food movements won't work without people willing to contribute the time and resources necessary to make them possible. Um, similarly, on a large scale, under capitalism, these models aren't sustainable for a truly equal global distribution of resources like food, water, medicine, um, because it isn't profitable. So um, how can relatively in insular systems of community food production um, as art specifically address this overarching global problem? And basically, how do you consider yourselves anti-capitalist? Uh, okay. <laughs> I think I'll just try to address the community gardening aspect. Um, <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I agree, uh, even urban food production is not going to feed cities if you grow in every square inch, it's not going to be enough food to feed people. But I think the ethos that community gardens create is a community of people producing food on a small scale that um, lends itself to the potential for radicalized discussion about land use, knowledge sharing, um, intellectual property. Um, a lot of times community gardens are organized on an anarchistic, in an anarchistic framework built based on consensus, which can have the potential to organize people in a different anti-capitalist framework. Can you um, address capital? Oh, yeah. God. Um, I don't, I mean, it would be paralyzing completely if I, if, if the goal was to like dismantle like Western capitalism. I just don't, <laughs> like, I, I, I like, I'm at a, I, I, and, and to be honest, I think that our project actually really exists in a marketplace. It, it creates an alternative marketplace. Um, and, uh, you know, someone wins money. Like, I, 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 don't, I, I, I don't think that our project claims to be anti-capitalist. Um, although it's not, and, 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 and I don't mean that, you know. They're socializing. Yeah, they're socializing, not socialism. Um, <laughs> good one, Matt. That's Matt's. Um, did you, I mean... Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, that, I think that's a, I, like, I also agree, it's kind of a paralyzing question. Um, but I think that what we were interested in when we were starting this thing is how do we learn from the struggles that are going on in the social justice community around what the nonprofit industrial complex is and what it does um, and how it um, separates um, the people that are interested in providing services to people to um, how to help communities in need and create solidarity models. I mean, this is like the way that, and I don't know, I don't know, we wanted to start somewhere. I mean, we're, we're pragmatists. Um, <laughs> you know, like, and we're interested in pragmatism as, you know, as like a philosophical tool to think about how we inhabit institutions and infrastructures and create incremental change that actually does something in the world. We're interested in doing things. Um, and so while we will always keep our um, anti-capitalist spirit in mind as um, in moving forward, I think it's really important for us to have seen the results of actions um, and have funded people and brought people together and all that stuff is like really was the, the first step for us and I think that's important. So. Okay, I'm just gonna, I think Tom in the front's kind of, what, what? I just wanted to say, um, one, of the, one of the reasons we bring these kinds of issues into the realm we call art is because that is a place where the question of value is debated. And these things need, you know, the whole values that are reflected by our current systems need to be debated. And art is a great place to do that. Um, I sort of thought of this question before you just had that discussion, so this might be repetitive. But, you know, you talk about the new us, but maybe the old us was much more powerful than the new us. In the 60s, you had you know, fundamental immigration reform, Medicare, Medicaid, you know, et cetera, the, the Civil Rights Movement, Voting Rights Act. And the new us could be like the Tea Party, right? And it's really depressing to say that. But do you feel in a way that, and I guess you already just answered this question, is there any hope of a new us doing anything fundamental beyond sort of swimming against this incredible sort of, you know, Reaganite neoliberal state that we're living in? 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> No, really, come on. Is that, that, that's it? Yes? I mean, I, that, that's an interesting question to me, the idea of um, uh, the old us and the new us. And it brings me back to something that I was thinking about when Julie was actually giving her presentation earlier today and talking about, uh, you know, art from before now and how it's all about air. It's about the same thing. There's, um, it's all related now, the way it's happening. And so I think it's, um, it's really important to think about uh, the old us and how it relates to the new us, but it can't be um, in a paralyzing way. It can't be in the, it was so much better back then. And it's like super interesting, this is why I really like Julie's presentation was that um, she tried to bring out like what those connections are and how they can like continue to inspire us and help us along the way now. Could it? With the new us, it wouldn't exist without the old us. Yeah, yeah I mean, I feel like we're like, this us is a product of the old us, you know? And, um, you know, I mean, I think this idea of, like, th this us-ness, you know, it's like, it's, it's like, a, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's about cr these, like, you know, like, these, these, like, sites of becoming, right? Like, you have these, like, places where, like, we all come together and, like, talk about these ideas, and there's this, like, there's this new us that is generated by all of us being in this room, and then it'll dissipate, and then you know, next year we'll come together at some other thing, or we were all on a train together and there was an usk form there, and like... Can I ask a question? Yes. Please, go ahead. Okay. Where, um, where are you? Right in front of you. <laughs> us. Oh, hey. We're us. I get food, as I declared before. Food is the best site for everything, as you've all... Um, I just want to say in defense of the, of the gardens, you don't have to completely support yourself with the garden. Anything supplemental in a garden is like, that's the oldest trick in the world, and it's incredibly American. You're talking about self-sufficiency, and that's not a bad thing. Um, I think the guys with the $200 check, I think I would encourage you to take a note from your elders in terms of service and let yourself, you know, liberate the price tag on the way in and serve your colleagues. I'd pay 20 bucks for your meal, you know, do the old lesbian sliding scale. Like there, there are ways to do this. You know, I, I worked in a lesbian feminist restaurant, separatist restaurant in Boston in the 80s and the entire purpose of the restaurant was to give us a place to work. It wasn't sustainable because none of us wanted to make food. <laughs> So, so that's the pro you know, that's the problem. But if you're going to spend the time and the money to make that pot of soup, <laughs> let people throw in a hundred dollars if they want to. Uh, I just have a short little statement after Tom's um, uh, mentioning the tea party. Is that all this fabulous group here should, uh, besides food, be go getting the boat out so that we don't have the tea party? And you're really using your creative <coughs> connections to go around all of America and make sure that we, we don't have them. I'll be here tomorrow since there's a government talk tomorrow. So one second. Um, do we have a... Jason? Okay. I'm going to run up. Um, our online audience is bursting with questions. <laughs> can, I, can I ask the question first? Yes. No. Okay. <laughs> I take no. Well, no, you're going to have a turn. We're going to just do this this way. Um, there's an interest in, in what this fundraising model can be applied to beyond art and food, if anyone wants to discuss like ways to expand this um, into in, I, uh, ways yeah. to expand it beyond uh, a fundraising model strictly for art per se, but towards larger political purposes and the, the examples that were brought up were sex and therapy and, and a number of other things. But sex you take it wherever therapy? you want. Sex and therapy, two separate. Oh. Okay. Right? Yes, two. I mean, you know, this, it, there's nothing inherently, um, uh, you know, about art um, in, embedded in, the, in our model. And, and I mean, I'll let Jeff answer, obviously. But um, 
Uh, yes, I think anybody should take it on and do whatever it is that they want with it. It's just about thinking about how to get creative with organizational structures or how you organize things and like that be your approach to making whatever it is that you want to make happen, happen. So I don't think it's necessarily about art, but we, we started with a community that we saw needing um, small bits of money and so that's, that's what we did. Totally. I mean, I think this can translate to schools or... I mean, and it already has. Yeah, I mean, it has. Know, we you stole know, it from them, you know. Arguably, half of the projects we fund aren't art. You know, I mean, it, it also is, you know, you know, I see them as creative and generative and therefore artistic, but that doesn't mean that, you know, there's like a strong aesthetic practice involved with what we're doing mm -hmm. and yeah. what gets funded. I think so. that's kind of just to bring up the idea of what gets funded, and I think this is um, true for Feast too, is that like we don't necessarily fund like painting projects. Um, I mean sometimes you know if the group of people that show up at any given dinner want to fund those, but it, it is much more about like supporting community minded projects that then give on to other you know, to other people and to other structures. And I think that's kind of an interesting like culture that's come out of um, you know the projects individually. So. Can I ask my next question? I got a mic here. Yes. Uh, I'm going to critique this, I'm going to critique this panel for a second or the formation of this panel that I think that um, it did a disservice to some of the people on this panel, the art, you, the young art funders here, who I think are doing a great job. But I think that Claire and Amy and Agnes are talking about a totally different subject matter that food can be an organizing principle in this country for making a big change. Everybody eats and everybody eliminates. And ha where your elimination goes and where your food comes from has everything to do with climate control, who controls the land, who gives you healthy food, who gives you chemicals to eat. Can you eat out of boxes in the, you know, out of the local liquor store? Or do you get, you know, do you even have any land or dirt to plant food in? And you don't plant in dirt, you plant in topsoil, and topsoil is disappearing. And I think that you should have had people who really are talking about food politics on this panel, and it's a big missed opportunity for everyone who's asking, where's capitalism going? It's going down the tubes, down the toilet to our sewage systems. Um, anyways, I'm really sorry, you know, that there wasn't um, a better discussion on, because kitchen table politics is actually, you know, great grassroots organizing. I, I, I would argue, I mean, we had eight minutes to show our ideas. I, I've been to their projects and I've been to mine, and, and we're, we're full of grassroots and kitchen table politics. So we, we really are talking about a lot of the ideas that, you, that you're addressing, and we're funding a lot of artists that are investigating those ideas. Um, go ahead, Amy. I just, can I just defend for a second <laughs> um, Feast? Because I think the most potent thing that you can do is meet the farmer who grows your food. And at Feast, the farmers are coming and saying, this is what I did to produce this food. And that consciousness of that revaluing of what goes into making something grow and being produced, I think, is is monumental, um, and I think it's I think it's very potent. So I just well, I, I, I appreciate your criticism too, though. Like no, it's fine. I, 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 I love the work you're doing. I just think that it's apples and oranges here. That's all. Well, food politics is such a huge issue. The conversation is going to have to extend beyond this anyway. You know, it's sort of like all we can do is like do some little, you know, acupuncture stimulation. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to bring up the question of how other countries are dealing with the funding process um, since we've been spending a lot of time on that. So uh, I, I do know quite a lot about what's going on in England. Uh, do you realize that in England, the government actually controls lotteries and the money that they get from lottery, uh, of course, some of the money goes to those who choose to uh, invest in it, but a lot of the money just goes into the arts. And they are creating art projects around the country, very often in communities that need artists to go and work on improving situations. Another thing is that 
uh, as far as television is concerned, you know that we're totally loaded down with uh, all sorts of ads. What the British do is that they charge people when they have a television, they have to pay for a registration to use the television. So that's how the uh, British television is so good. <laughs> I mean, I was just listening to this on Charlie Rose the other night, they had the director of the, okay. of the British television, <laughs> and that's how they get money. But we don't seem to be doing stuff like that. So, just interested so in what your stuff responses like might be. You're not going to be able to hear the responses because time is over. And well, I want to thank our panelists on food and their culinary acupuncture. And um, we have a 15 minute break, and then we're going to come back. We're going to hear the incredible Rick Lowe. Thank you. 